Hello from the Philippines. Although by the time you're watching this, I'll probably already be in Sumba, Indonesia. So stay tuned on my Instagram to catch up with that journey. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today I wanna to talk about some filmmaking gear that you think you need, but trust me, you probably don't. And you're gonna be better off saving your money and traveling without it. So we're flipping the script a little bit and instead of telling you about all the gear that I love, I'm gonna tell you about the gear that I personally don't recommend if you're trying to be nimble and efficient on your travels. If you're stationary, maybe it's a different story, but then this video isn't for you. So remember, this is just my personal opinion based on experience and your needs may be different than mine. So stick around, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get into the gear I avoid when I'm on the road. Whew, I have the aircon pumping in here, but it is still super hot. We're gonna start with the trusty gimbal. Now, I would love to have one to show you here, but I don't travel with it, and here's why. I know when you see that buttery smooth, cinematic, and beautiful travel footage that content creators are putting out there, you feel envy and you wanna recreate them, and you know it's probably with a gimbal. But trust me, you won't envy that extra weight that it adds to your bag. Sure, gimbals can be great, and they are great for that buttery smooth footage. But honestly, they're bulky, they're heavy, and they're time consuming to set up. And another point is that they can attract unwanted attention when you're trying to be discreet and film something, which at least for me is often the case when I'm traveling. You know, if I'm filming somewhere and there's a lot of people around, I don't want everybody staring at me because I have this huge rake on my hands. It also helps you get a little bit up close and personal with your subjects because often people feel uncomfortable when you have a really big rig. And as I mentioned, speed. Speed is a big one because when you're traveling, things are happening spontaneously. You're not really crafting, a, I mean, you can be crafting a scene the way you want it to, but if you wanna capture the essence of a place and its people, you can't really tell them what to do and when to do it. You just have to be ready to capture it. So if you have to set up a whole gimbal every time you wanna do that, it's really gonna slow you down. So for travel, I just prefer having a camera and a lens that have in-body stabilization like my trusty 24 to 70 millimeters that it's a super versatile lens that has stabilization and can get you those beautiful shots. And buttery smooth footage is really nice and beautiful, but having a little bit of shake and having that handheld look makes your content a bit more interesting and represents a little bit more what it's like to actually be on the road where not everything is smooth sailing. But anyways, on to my next point. The second piece of gear that I don't recommend is the 100 to 500 lens. Now, yes, I do have this with me, but I regret it a little bit. I chose to bring this lens with me instead of my 70 to 200 because the zoom on this thing is just way more major. Um, and I have a little scratch on my 70 to 200, but I think I made the wrong decision. While having this incredible zoom can really seem like an asset, and it is in a lot of cases, the 100 to 500 millimeter lens or any equivalent from another brand is so heavy. And not only is it heavy, but it takes up a lot of space. I mean, look at this compared to a prime lens. The difference is insanity, even the width. So it's heavy and it takes up a lot of space. I can't even fit this in my camera bag. I try and squeeze it in my check-in bag, which is not the safest thing to do with a lens like this. So as much as I love it, and as much as I thought having that extra zoom would really help take my content to the next level, I don't know if the pros outweigh the cons. If you want a bit of zoom and you don't want to add the extra kgs to your bag, I would really recommend the 70 to 200. Now it's not that zoom, but it gives you that little extra boost and it's also a beautiful lens. You'll see if you ever get to try it that the footage that comes out of a 70 to 200 is really crisp and has beautiful, beautiful compression. Now, no hate against this lens. I do love it and it's not that I regret the purchase, it's just that I don't think it's a practical one to travel with. Next up, let's talk drones. Drones can capture some beautiful aerial shots that I guarantee will elevate your footage. But most countries have really strict drone laws that mean that you not only can't bring them in, but if you can bring them in, you have to do a whole bunch of paper. Oh. You have to do a whole bunch of paperwork, have licenses, pay fees. It can get really complicated. But there's an exception to this rule. There is a drone that is legally under the weight limit that determines if you have to register your drone and get the licenses and all that stuff. And that is the DJI Mini 3. And I think they just came out with the 4 a few days ago, so it would apply to that one as well. This drone is amazing and it's 
it's just so convenient. It is super, super light. Really, it, I think it weighs less than an iPhone without the battery in it at least. And it's tiny, so it packs really easily. So although I do admit that the bigger drones have much better quality footage, I wouldn't recommend bringing them with you because not only is it a hack, but it takes up space, it's heavy, and this one does the trick. I've even used the DJI Mini 3 for professional and commercial work and no one ever complains. I will say though, for shorter trips, I would consider bringing a bigger and better drone, but it depends on the situation. And this one is amazing. Whew, it's hot. I was just bragging a few minutes ago to the owner of this villa how amazing the aircon is, and I think I've jinxed it. Let's see. There's three dogs on this property, which is like 50% of the reason we booked this hotel, and they're so cute. Okay, anyways, last but not least, the fourth piece of gear that I really don't recommend traveling with because it can get expensive is hard drives. So when I first started out with con Excuse me, I'm trying to film. Is this dog gonna sit there and bark all day? Okay. When I first started out with content creation, I went for the cheapest of ev I went for the cheapest of everything. And that includes hard drives, which tend to be a lot cheaper than SSDs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hard drives and SSDs are things that look like this that you store your footage on, if you're not storing it on the cloud somewhere. But back to my point, the reason that I don't like these hard drives is because although they're cheaper, they're a lot riskier. They have moving parts in them, so even when you plug them in and you're using them, you can actually hear the fans in them working. They're slower, they're bulkier, and they're a lot more delicate. Delicate. And I mean seriously delicate. If you drop one of these even once or bang it against something, it will break. And you could lose all of your footage. You can get them repaired, but that happened to me once and it cost me a hefty $700 to fix it. Was it worth it? I don't know. So that's why I recommend SSDs. Okay, I've let the dog in the room, so hopefully he will stop barking. So when you're deciding, please go with the SSD instead of the hard drive. Not only is it smaller and lighter, but it's a lot more durable. I think you can actually drop these things and it would be fine. I mean, I don't recommend dropping them. I've even made like a makeshift cover for some of mine because I'm so worried, but should be fine. SSDs are great, hard drives are not. And SSDs are a lot faster, so you can actually edit off of them. You don't have to keep your footage on your laptop. So those are the four pieces of gear that I recommend you leave at home when you're traveling. Remember, it's all about simplifying your kit and bringing only what's truly necessary. This way, you can focus more on capturing your surroundings and less on heavy, bulky gear in your bag. I'd love to know what you guys think and if you agree or disagree with any of these. So please comment below any suggestions or thoughts you have on the matter. And if you're curious about other gear tips and tricks for travel filmmaking, check out my other videos. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.